What's up, Collider TV Talk fans? Josh McGuga here, back on another episode with the lovable, the immeasurable, uh, talented, and yet subdued Thad oh. Williams. Well, hi there. <laughs> What's up, buddy? How talented yet subdued. Uh, I don't know. I was just looking for adjectives at that uh, point. Fair enough. I, I mean, it sounds like it sounds like I got drugged. Um, I got a dart in your neck, man. Yeah. yeah. Hi. <laughs> What's going on? Let's talk TV. <laughs> that's right, that's um, me. I, dude, I just swear to God, this week, I had every intention of watching Daredevil every night before I went to oh. bed. Because Amanda will fall asleep during sure. like, an episode she's watching. And, yeah, I make, yeah, yeah. and I know as soon as she falls asleep, because I start hearing her breathing heavy, a little heavier. <sighs> yeah. Like a little, she goes full <sighs> Vader. <laughs> she goes Mandalorian on the Disney streaming <sighs> service. Yeah. Then she rolls over and says goodnight. And that's when I know it's my time I can turn on Daredevil. Okay? Oh, nice. How, so how many episodes did you get? One. Oh. <laughs> I fell asleep like three straight times bum, into bum. Daredevil. So I, I will I, I finish fell asleep, it, I think, I fell asleep. by next week. I think. I was watching. I, I finished four. Okay. But I, I was watching three and episode three. And I think I, I think I did two, three. Two and three back to back, okay. and into three, uh, it was a little later in the evening than I thought. Are I might have might might have finished my whiskey, and then I woke up, and it's like ten minutes into episode four. I'm like, "What happened? Oh no! How? <laughs> Wait, he's there? What? Why is there? Why is there a spaceship in this? <laughs> like, I I was really confused. So uh, went back, caught the last bit okay. of episode three, which is a big part, okay. and then and then uh, and then started episode four again. I, episode four is great. Okay, that's as far as I've gotten so far. Gotcha. I know Dorian. I mean, Dorian got to watch like six of them before it even came out. Right. So he's probably already finished with the whole show. I think I, you know, I was talking to David Griffin this week. Uh, oh, how is Dave? Friend of the show. He's great. He's great. He's the best. He How's played, that beard? He, he played in the Queen's Cup. He's actually clean shave. Uh, no, it was like, um, it was like a scruff. Five o'clock shadow. Oh, five o'clock shadowy. Uh, and he, I was like, what do you watch? A time shadow for him. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, he, you know, he sees all the stuff very early. Yeah. You know, and he's, because he's their streaming editor over at IGN right. now. And so I was like, what are you watching? What are you liking? And he, you know, he started talking about Daredevil and how he, and then how he really like House on Haunted Hill, which I won't watch. Because yesterday, yeah, the, haunting of said, Hill, the Haunting of Hill House. What I call it? The ha House on a Haunted Hill. Yeah. It's close. It's pretty close. It's close, but that's not the show. <laughs> that's sure? not what it's called. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm, I'm positive. Um, are, you, are you sure we don't have a show called The House There's on Haunted probably, Hill? There's probably, Probably a show, yeah. but that's that shows on like some other streaming network that you've never heard of. Okay, okay. stream stream Quibi? two. It's not Quibi. Ah, it's not Quibi. Quibi just it. Quibi. Quibi got a new office down the street that. from your place. I saw that. That yes. big 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 facility. Yeah. They got a lot of money. They do. They've got like they've got like uh, Mega Millions jackpot money. That one point six bill. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we uh, did not win, which is why we're back here yes. for another episode of TV did Talk. Not. Somebody in North uh, Carolina won. South Carolina. South Carolina. South Carolina. South Carolina. Gorgeous uh, this time of year. Yeah, peach. Lots mm. of peaches. Mm. Uh, so, uh, what what stuff is what stuff has happened in the week of uh, TV news? Well, before we get into, it, I just want to apologize to someone on Twitter. I said I was halfway through it. What I meant to say was I was halfway through the first episode. <laughs> But David Griffin did say that Bodyguard is great because he's watched yeah, a bunch of and, it. Yeah, well, and Bodyguard, like, it's like the biggest ratings on, that in England. UK television's had in a long time. Yeah. Uh, and now we have it on Netflix. And Just yeah, dropped. There's only six episodes. Yeah. So I, I fully intend. That's one that I think I can get my wife to watch. Okay. No, I, I, that's an Amanda show. That's, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, like there's, there's, there's. Both of our there's, Amandas. There, there's murders. There's, uh, there's sexy bodyguards. Yes. There's, there's a crime. I'm sure to, there's war flashbacks. I think there's a crime to solve. And I think that there's. There's there's a it looks like a British Jack Ryan yeah and there's a, there's a male there's there's a male bodyguard and a female uh, person that he has to uh, to, to to bodyguard guard. to guard bodies of and yes. I think they're gonna I think they're gonna have, gonna have some hot bodies to here's guard. a question yeah. does Kevin Costner make a cameo ooh it's possible mm. it's possible mm -hmm. he, he he rides a horse over from Yellowstone oh yes and becomes uh, becomes a uh, a horseback bodyguard there you. <laughs> Done. Yeah. Done. The horseback bodyguard. All right. Biggest news of the week, at least uh, for me. And well, listen, yeah. we run we run this show. Okay. <laughs> so we make We decide the news. We decide the news. And the biggest news of the week was yesterday the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, the greatest Woo! show on TV. Yes. Dropped a trailer for season two. It's going to come out beginning in December, Christmas, Hanukkah December for 5th. everybody. December, December 5th. December 5th. It's a Hanukkah gift for all of us. Yes. Uh, and uh, I loved the trailer. I loved. I just this show is just so damn good. I, it made me it made me Very, feel everything all the, good. All, all of the feels, all yes. of the things. We got a little we got a little glimpse of Zach Levi, who I think is the new love interest in oh, season two. Okay, uh, the, the shot of them on the rowboat. Yes. Uh, yes. So I don't know when that when that meeting happens. But no, he's no, there. no, no, no. That was a uh, Easter egg for Shazam. What? That was an Easter egg for Shazam. Oh, 
right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, she calls out. She says Shazam, and then he pops up, and then uh, it becomes a whole it becomes a whole thing. Yep. She gets superpowers. Just yeah. a, real quick before we go on. We work for Marvel. We are shills for their company, and they pay us our salary. All right, moving on. Moving on. No, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, December 5th. Uh, I, I mean, honestly, can't recommend this show highly enough. Yeah, I mean, and we, we can't stop saying it. And you no. have until you have from now until December 5th to watch the first eight episodes. Eight episodes. There's only eight. It's so easy. And then December 5th rolls around, yeah. and you get... Eight more, yep. and it's going to be fantastic. I did, I did like to see that there is more Lenny Bruce in the uh, in yes. The, in Lenny, season two. Lenny Bruce is back because I is love back. that actor. He was in uh, he was in Newsroom. Uh, yeah, Lenny he, Bruce, uh, marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Who is uh, who plays he, Lenny? He Bruce? played uh, Olivia Munn's first boyfriend in the Newsroom. Or fiance really? or something. Really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't recognize him from that, but yeah. that's exact. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Uh yeah, what is his name? What is his name? Where why is he not in the friggin' cast list Sometimes on IMDb? IMDB it, it, the, the order the order it's drives all, uh Luke Kirby is his Luke name. Luke Kirby. And uh yeah, he uh, he's also on he's on the Deuce. Yes. He plays Gene Goldman on the Deuce. Uh-huh. Uh and then he plays Lenny Bruce on Marvelous Mrs. Lenny Bruce. Oh, Jesus Christ. He was on Rectify. Oh, he was he's John the Stern lawyer. He's the lawyer on Rectify. Yes. Which if you're watching Minds well, maybe MC, maybe thought on the newsroom. If you're watching Minds MC, the creator of Rectify, it, totally Ray McKinnon, actor. is yes. is on Minds MC, yeah. and later on in this episode, yep. we are going to be talking to Antonio. Yes, he plays Riz on Minds MC. Had he had a great a big, episode. He had a big weekend. arc uh, on, on, Tuesday. on Tuesday's episode. Yeah. We're going to be talking some some spoilers and some speculations and 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 what's it like to work on the show and whether or not the Sons of Anarchy can join the Minds. Yes, in a future uh, future season. Uh-huh. So uh, they but were yeah. mentioned this time. This episode for the first time they were mentioned. We obviously we saw Robert Patrick's. Yes, but yeah. We got crew, a name, name check. But we got a name check at the Sons of Anarchy Motor Club, yes. uh, which was pretty sweet in this. But back to Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Trailer was fantastic. Check it out. December 5th. I mean, I, well, I mean, we'll obviously do a separate review because I love it so much. But I, I we got to get some other people in here to talk it with us. Yeah. Uh, because there, There's some big fans in the office. Yes. And it's it's one of my – I think it's – Easily it was one my of the best favorite, shows. It was my favorite show I mean, last one, year, it won Best Comedy for a reason. Yeah, so uh, for sure. now, real moving on, Josh. Yes. I, I wanted to ask you: Are you excited for Luke Cage season three? Well, I didn't watch season two, but so. like you're ready for it. Oh, right? I'm psyched. Uh, yeah. What about Iron Fist season three? Oh my! I mean, I can't wait. Guess what? What? You're going to have to wait a little bit. Oh, and no. by a little bit, I mean you're never going to get them oh. because they both got canceled. <laughs> ah, crap. And I tell you why, and I'm going to say it here, and I've said it here before, and I've, and I've, we've been saying it since day one of TV Talk 1.0. Yes. You should listen to us when we tell you these things. Ten episodes. At the most. At the most. And they did that for Iron Fist Season 2. It's correct, and it was better. And it was better. There you go. They did it. They 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 course corrected some of the, a lot of the story problems that they had with Luke Cage Season 1 mm-hmm. in Season 2, and it was better. However, I think Netflix, I think Netflix is cleaning house. Oh, Netflix is just straight up cleaning house because the the Disney streaming service starts next year. Okay. They're going to take a lot of the Marvel characters and give them their own properties and all that stuff. So you think they're going to do like a Luke Cage Iron Fist Heroes for Hire over there? or Maybe, but they have so many characters that they can just start fresh. Mm-hmm. But Netflix, n- kind of like what we were talking with last week with f- them losing friends, mm-hmm. they need their own programming, their own IP yes. that they can never lose because – at a moment's notice, Disney can pull the plug and mm-hmm. they lose they lose a big property. Yep. So they I mean they bought uh they bought uh the whole library of I think Rob Liefeld's uh comic comic history. Okay. Uh like he he, he has a whole version of uh of characters that are like his his versions of the X-Men okay. that they uh and that that they purchased that they're gonna develop into shows and TV um the extreme universe, excuse me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so they're going to do movies and TV shows and all this stuff. And then past X Games highlights. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's, cool. it's X Stream. X Stream. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's the it's it's the precursor. It's a prequel to the XFL. Mm. And it's a sequel spinoff thing to the X Games. Ah. Yeah. But okay. uh, yeah. So um, Netflix Stream. Okay. Uh, so they're going to do stuff like that because that's they're wholly IP. owned by Netflix now. Got it. So they don't have to share it with anybody because the story I read. About about Luke Cage was that they were the writers I mean, room. It's developed, expensive. Yeah, it's not cheap, and yeah. the the writers room developed 
a bunch of storylines and gave them a bunch of treatments for season three. Mm-hmm. And apparently Netflix put in their notes, Marvel put in their notes. They were working on getting all the notes addressed and getting everybody happy. Sure. But there were still a few execs that didn't say it from which side. There were a few execs that were just like, we're done with this. We right. don't want to do this anymore. It's too expensive. It's not giving us the returns that we want. I mean, think of the the cultural touchstone that has been Daredevil season three right. coming back to the air versus Luke Cage and to Iron no Fist, fair, which just kind of like came dropped. out. It was just like, oh, that there's a show now. Yeah. You can go watch it. Yeah. The Defenders was not as nearly as big of a hit as they wanted no. it to be. Uh, Jessica Jones, I think if Jessica Jones hadn't, Jessica Jones season three has already been filmed. Okay. So if they hadn't filmed it, I think it'd be done. Probably, probably be done. And I don't think we, I don't think we're ever going to get Daredevil four. No. And I think, I mean, they're already filming Punisher. Punisher two, two is e- either done filming or in the middle of filming. Right. Uh, so we're going to get, we'll see that. we're going to get Jessica Jones three and Dare and Punisher two. Right. And maybe maybe, maybe they do one more Daredevil. Maybe. Maybe. But I mean, that's by the time that done. comes around. I mean, basically, they're going back to just the skin and bones, which was just Daredevil. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Um, I, I mean, I, too to much be, too soon. I like. Yeah, I agree. I, I think a lot of this was rushed. I think um, I think a lot of it was. I think, like you said, too much too soon. But again, these these the problem with Luke Cage and the problem with Iron Fist and the problem with with even with Jessica Jones I think season two and even season one and I will even say it about Daredevil because there were a lot of fluff and I think yeah. I think if season one if we're talking about eight to ten episodes season one looks very different it's all Wilson Fisk season right. two is all Punisher exactly and then Punisher spins off we don't even see like the Electra no hand and we, we don't episode. get the hand because that was all setting us setting us up for the Defenders, Defenders. which was kind of a Bust. But but what it also set up with, with an even bigger bust was it set it us for Iron Fist, who right. was always chasing the hand. Yeah. And dude, the hand that that was the thing that that pissed me off about this whole thing is if they if they want to get the the not die hard comic book fans to tune into this because like somebody yeah. somebody like casual viewers casual viewers who were like oh what should I watch on Netflix oh Daredevil this sounds kind of cool yeah oh Iron Iron Fist I don't know if I'm gonna watch this yada 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 yeah, right yeah, yeah. it's the fact that you're basically fighting the Foot Clan from the Ninja Turtles they are the weakest yeah. enemies they they just I'm where, ass, first I'm of all ass, where I'm do assuming, they all come I'm from I'm assuming the Foot Clan was a parody of the Hand it, it had, it had to, be. to be right it had to be had to be. And they, there's just a million of them everywhere. They're always in the shadows, and they can beat them all. There's a hundred hand there's one guys right behind you. <laughs> Watch out! Don't do that. I just saw, it follows us. We dude. I just got the chills. Can't hand. tell me that hand. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. follows. It's gonna be on Cener soon. If you oh, haven't watched, yeah. yeah. Josh, Josh screams so loud. A lot. Uh, if you were watching movie talk last week, uh, <laughs> Mark Ellis was it. doing his best to not flip well, out at you. Here's the funny part. He was just hearing screams as yeah. he was trying to do a show. My bad on that one. It's okay. Uh, the, apparently, Cody walked in and I thought I they were. I saw legs and I was like, oh, what was that? and it was Cody going like. Yeah, bring it down. it down. Just bring it down. Just keep it down a yeah. bit. And it, it, it had an yeah. inverse effect. Yeah. Now, here, and I'm, I'm going to go back to it and I will harp on it. If you get those <laughs> seasons, if you get Luke Cage at eight episodes, yeah. you don't have those two villains. You just have like the burgeoning right. of Luke Cage and what he is. And, and then you get Misty Knight and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then in Iron Fist season one, we maybe do a different and we don't have to he- keep hearing for the first five episodes. Be like, I am Kunlun Man. I come. F- I came yeah. from Kunlun. My name is Danny Red. Guys, Seriously, I'm Danny Rand. Like, we fucking get it. Yeah. Sorry for swearing. We get it. No, it's you're Danny Rand. It's true. It's true. It was it was like it was like uh five episodes of Splash. Yes. The movie. It was like just total fish out of water. Right. Like, who is this? What is this thing? What is this phone? Right. I'm from Kunla. <laughs> Yeah, that's that was the half of the show. And then dared and then, you know, I've always made this joke of like, okay, I must protect this city, right? Was always dared oh, yeah. kind of a situation. Yeah. Uh, and then it was like I must protect this city was arrow, right? Everybody's always protecting their They've city. They've gotta have yeah. They've gotta protect their city. The city's under siege. There's all these guys. Would, are always, I mean, if Pittsburgh was under siege, you would protect it. Yes. I mean, that's for sure. But what I'm saying is New York has been under siege by every (laughs) effing superhero (laughs) and ghost or alien from outer space, right? Yeah. So the fact that Daredevil is only policing Hell's Kitchen. Exactly. Right? The Daredevil. It's a big city. It's it's, it's a big know, city. There's five like, boroughs. Yeah. I mean, Hell's Kitchen's like ten blocks. By Where's the 20 Long Island blocks? superhero? Yeah. Where's the <laughs> Connecticut? Where's like the Stamford, Connecticut superhero? Is there is there is there a superhero that's only tracking Governor's Island? <laughs> like that the, little <laughs> with the tram. <laughs> you have the to get tram the, car? the ferry over there. Yeah. 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 Uh, 
So, <laughs> so when they finally get together for Defenders, like, oh, yeah, hey, this is Daredevil from Hell's Kitchen. This is Iron Fist from uh, Around the Way. This is Luke Cage from Harlem. And this is Jessica Jones from wherever the F she's from. And it, just like there was no organic nature of how they came together right. besides Rosario Dawson. Right? Yeah, He was like, hey, I got a guy. Yeah. Have you met? In a total, in, I'm in a total New York way, like, <laughs> I got a guy. Okay. I got a guy. He's perfect. He's there now. Huh? And if she had played the night nurse <laughs> with with a De Niro, I think it would have been a whole different, whole different uh, opinion <laughs> on all the Netflix shows. Because when I saw the first Daredevil, I was like, okay, this is fantastic. Yeah. But Thirteen episodes is too many. Just was completely, 100%. completely agree. Okay, but it was a great season, Wilson Fisk and everything. But I thought it should have ended at nine or ten. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then we get. Jessica Jones and I watched the whole thing and I wasn't too psyched about Jessica Jones. It just it felt very slow. But had it been eight episodes, yeah. I would have been, oh man, this is fantastic. I loved because there was one villain. I loved Jessica Jones season one for that fact. It was yeah. one villain, one story. The the B the B stories Trish dove, Yeah, Trish Trish's stories dovetailed with the main story. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like they had filler episodes or anything. I agree. Even though it was a long, slow burn, I it was all heading to one end point, which yes. I really liked. I really liked the way that they told season one. Season two of Jessica Jones, f seven episodes in, you didn't really know where they were going and no they didn't idea. really develop the 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 storyline until halfway through the season. Right. And then Luke Cage had the same problem. The first half of the season was amazing. The second half felt like it was tacked on right. or like a whole different season. And then season two was a continuation of that in a certain way and did a really good job of having one storyline for 13 episodes while still having a few fillers. But for the most part, they were heading in one direction. It felt like a felt like a uh, a true follow up to the second half of season one. Correct. Yes, but I'm 100% with you. They're done now. I think the Heroes for Hire will never really see them ever again. But maybe. Could happen. Maybe Daredevil shows up in Punisher 2. I know you Punisher got a kick 2. out of the Always Sunny Philadelphia. Oh, Let's God, that, that cracked me up yeah, so that was, that was hard. Funny. If you haven't seen it, it's on my Twitter. Uh, someone sent it to me. It's uh, the shot from, from when... Uh, Iron it's Fist defenders. shows up. It, no, it's from Iron Fist showed up in Luke Cage season two. Correct. Yes. And and uh, they set it to the Always Sunny intro, and it right. cracked me the hell up. Yeah. Uh, you know what's also going to crack me the hell up? <laughs> I'm really excited that this news just broke this morning, okay. uh, yesterday for you all. Uh, brand new. We, we've been hearing that Alex Kurtzman has this giant deal, at CBS All Access, to uh -huh. pr produce a bunch of Star Trek shows. It's where we're getting the 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 Jean Luc Picard sequel series yes, yeah. to Next Generation. Well, they've finally announced uh, the first spinoff show that's not uh, Jean-Luc Picard. Uh, it's called Star Trek Lower Decks. It's an adult animated series from the head writer of Rick and Morty. Uh, this, will Mike be the McMahon. First, this will be the first Star Trek series I watch. I believe it. I believe it. Uh, it's going to focus on the support crew serving on one of Starfleet's least important ships. Uh, <laughs> and according to... I mean, it's basically what Orville wanted to do. Yeah, and I, I feel like there have been some Star Wars and Star Trek... Is it uh, like fan, fan fiction uh, okay. uh, sh comedy shows like this, where okay. it's like the unimportant people that work in the, in the background. Mm -hmm. uh, but... According to Kurtzman, he wrote, uh, he said, Mike won our hearts with his first sentence. I want to do a show about the people who put the yellow cartridge in the food replicator so a banana can come out the other end. <laughs> and this is uh, Mike McMahon. Uh, if you didn't know, he's he's a huge Star Trek fan, lifelong Trekkie. Uh, he actually created a really popular Twitter account. Uh, called TNG season eight. Okay, and it was him pitching storylines for. You showed me this before. It's him, and I pitch, it's him pitching storylines for yeah. the f the never produced eighth season of Star Trek: The Next Generation. Okay. It ended up giving him an official book deal. That's where they like put it together. Yeah. Uh, he co-wrote the upcoming short Trek film, uh, starring Rain Wilson, mm -hmm. who plays Harry Mudd on Star Trek Discovery. Okay, they're doing a standalone short on CBSL Access that he co-wrote mm -hmm. um, and worked on with Rain. Uh, so, but this is going to be, you know, it's going to be like Rick and Morty in the Star Trek universe, basically. Yes. Uh, I love it. Okay. I think it's, it's definitely not new territory. I think this, 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 this setup has been done before. Yeah. But I look forward to seeing it done in an official capacity. Yes. Because they're going to be able to play with stuff that you haven't been, have uh, that you haven't been able to, to have before. The whole point now, of CBS All Access is that they got to get people. They need to get people to tune in year round. Right. Star Trek Discovery is only thirteen episodes. 
Mm -hmm. uh, 15 episodes season one. Okay. Uh, the short tracks, they're rolling out once a month. Okay. Who knows when the Picard show is actually going to debut? The Twilight Zone is supposed to come out next year. The Good uh, Sister. The Good Fight. The Good Fight is on there. If okay. you're a huge fan of the Good uh, Good, the Wife. Good Wife and you want a sequel, that is the thing. Uh, they uh, Will Ferrell produced a uh, a comedic cop show that's on there. Okay. Uh, but they they don't have like if you're a Star Trek fan and that's the only reason you're subscribing, they don't have a reason for you to tune in 52 weeks of the year. Got it. And pay that monthly sub. So. All these shows are to help bridge the gap. Mm -hmm. So, like, you'll get one episode of Discovery for 15 weeks, and then you'll get one episode of this animated show for, you know, 15 right. weeks. They gave this a two-season order. And then you're going to get Jean-Luc Picard coming back for, you know, 13 episodes, okay. whatever that might be. So they have to they have to fill the slate somehow. I, I'm glad that they're doing it with an adult animated comedy. <laughs> I think that's friggin' hilarious. I, I, listen, I'm, I'm, you, you know me. I'm not a giant Star Trek fan. I don't I know, know anything it's okay. about it. It's okay. Uh, everybody's got their thing. Yep. And mine just didn't so – just, just wasn't Star Trek. But – uh, I do like an animated space program. I know you do. I, I do like uh, Rick and Morty. I've always been a big Futurama fan. Yeah, yeah. Same and here. Uh, I, there was this show, and I always bring it up in here. I always forget the name of it, but it came from the dudes from Always Sunny, and they just shot a pilot, and it never went yes, to series. It never went to series, but it was this. It was this concept. Correct. It was. It was, it was this exact. It concept. was this concept. Yep. Uh, I forget what it was called. Like Charlie Day was in the pilot. And yeah. I think Mac. Did they eventually release the pilot? I feel like I watched it. Once I think they did it on like an FX streaming thing. Yeah, I feel like I um, watched the pilot or something similar, um, uh, like or a fan version. But yes, yeah, I, I, I was looking forward to that show for quite a while. It never happened. Then okay. the Orville came out on Fox, which was kind of a retread right. of their original idea, mixed with the like early ideals of '60s Star Trek. Yes, yeah, that's I, exactly yeah, what it was. I'm totally blanking on what the name of the show was, but. Man. Uh, all right. So did you watch Modern Family last night? I did. Because I saw the headline about they finally killed off the cast member. Yep. It was not the person that I thought it was going to be. Well, I see. I, the whole time I thought it was going to be a major character, and it really wasn't. I knew it wasn't going to be a I didn't. I knew it wasn't going to be a full-time cast member. No. Because that just felt Too like. sad. Well, it felt like we would have heard that a deal was expiring, We like behind the scenes. Right. And I just didn't think. That they frankly had the the chutzpah to to kill off a major character. I think that nice that was. I thought it was a. Um, I've been watching Mar Marvelous and Mrs. Maisel. Oh, yeah. uh, they I I I figured that that it was a marketing stunt to a certain degree mm -hmm. to get people to tune in to the tenth season uh, to see who was going to die and then it was going to be a side character. Right. My vote was always on Fred Willard, who plays. Uh, Which plays you were close. The, plays the dad. Yeah, you were close. But uh, spoiler alert: if you are a huge Modern Family fan yeah. and didn't watch last night's episode, it was Ed O'Neill's first wife, Dee Dee, played the by mom, Shelley Long. Yeah, Shelley Long, the mom mm -hmm. of Claire, Claire, and, and uh, uh, Mitchell. Mitchell. Yes. And they, it was a good episode. It was. Did they take it hard? It was a. It was like a funny way of taking it hard because they had was it their a, Halloween episode? It was the Halloween episode because they've always done like big Halloween huge episodes. Halloween episodes, and it was very. It was very funny. I thought it was really well done. Uh, it was it was heartfelt at points. It was hysterical at points. It was they all had their different way of kind of coping with it, uh, and I found it to be a one of the funnier, but also more realistic ways of looking at death in the history of sitcoms. Okay, that's weird. Wow. Yeah. All right, I might have to check that episode out because I, 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 Modern Family after like season five, six, I, I yeah. haven't watched continuously. I'll pop in on mm -hmm. an episode here and there. I, I, I just. It kind of fell off my DVR for you know, a little while. Like when when a sitcom does a death episode, yes. you hear way more. A like, very special, -na 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 -na. a very special episode. Yeah, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. No, and it was it was done perfectly. Modern Family, yes. Yeah, and uh, I thought it, I thought it was really well done. And if you have a, like a, if you have trouble with death or you have trouble with that kind of thing and the coping mechanism, watch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I think it was very helpful. Okay, I think it was I think it was really well done. It wasn't like laugh out loud. It was it like like Mary Tyler Moore chuckles style, yes. like 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 full on laughing at the funeral sort yes. of thing. Yes. All right. All yeah. right. That's yeah. interesting. Um, moving on. Uh, this is I think this is a really cool story. Yeah. And I did like you read this. that the I Rolling did. Stone article. I liked it. Yeah. So Rolling Stone released this article about um, the girl, the actress who plays Lori on De the Deuce, which yes. is a show that I watch on on HBO. Yeah, it's about the 1970s uh, sex uh, porn industry, basically. It's right? Sort of. It's so it's. It's a 
a lot about like the birth of porn and then the movement of porn is okay. in a certain extent because it's about like the crumbling of the old Times Square and the and like the building of of it, uh, all like the massage parlors, the peep gotcha. shows, uh, the people that run that, the mafia backing of the of bars. You're and... saying the mafia was involved in porn and <laughs> sex trade? No way. I'm... Really shocked, right? Whoa. <laughs> uh, blow your mind. Yeah. Um, and the people that run it, um, and, and also porn and, and, and women directors in porn and women in porn. Th- that being said, yeah, it yeah. is a very nude centric yeah, show. Yeah. Gotcha. Like there's an F ton of nudity. It sounds in like, this yeah, show. everything you described was like, that's HBO to like, to an 11. The nth degree. Yeah, yeah. If I was a kid and my parents had HBO and they came in and I was watching The Deuce, yeah, they'd be yeah, like, yeah. oh, okay, we're canceling HBO. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. lot of it where it, it is a porn. I mean, it's sure, straight Sure, up. sure, sure. And so... Uh, I don't know if I've noticed per se, but I like that. So the story goes that they've hired this uh, a, a position called an intimacy coordinator. Yes. Because a lot of the actresses, when they're in that situation, because I'm sure there's a lot of men behind the scenes or men directing and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. They didn't want to speak up and be say, as they say, a pain. But now they have an intimacy coordinator that says, "Are you comfortable? Can we do this?" Sure. And David Simon said, "I will never do a show again without an intimacy coordinator." It's awesome. I think. That's, yeah. That's really cool because I think male or female. Yeah. In that situation, feels very vulnerable. Yes, scared. Uh, you know, if you go to acting class or you hear any actor talking about it, and they talk about sex scenes where they have to be completely naked, they always say the same thing. Of uh, guys would say, "I'm sorry if I get, you know, if I get aroused. I'm yeah. sorry if I don't." Right? It's like that whole kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's just, but it, it's all very mechanical. There's lights. There's cameras everywhere. There's people telling you to do things and yeah. whatnot. And so. I think this intimacy coordinator is, and it. I don't. I know it is. You can correlate it to a Me Too movement of sorts. Sure. But I think more so, it's like, hey, listen, if we're gonna push the envelopes of television, but not, we don't want it to be an actual porn. Right. We have to have somebody on set that is saying, all right, maybe this is the wrong angle, maybe this is the wrong light. As far, instead of a director, yeah, who, who has other obligations, and, and and needs to think about the bigger picture. Right. There's a there's a specific job for every single aspect of filmmaking and yes. television te- uh, television sets so it makes perfect sense that there would be someone whose sole job it is is to make sure that the actors feel comfortable and are are taken care of physically and emotionally yes. for these physically uh, emotional tolls and the person in this article uh, I think has a stunt coordinator background, mm-hmm. fight choreography and yeah, such. Yeah, that's right. And that's and and that's a spe- and that, and that's a role that over the years has become a very specific job. Where anytime anyone's doing any sort of stunts, yeah. there's a there's someone brought in who whose responsibility it is is to make sure that all of the performers and the crew are all in, safe. Aren't seriously injured or yeah, they're all safe during these killed. during during these physically demanding uh, shoots. Mm-hmm. And it, and it can be jumping out of a window, but it could be as easy, as simple as just like a fist fight. Yeah. So uh, so it makes perfect sense yeah. to do it in the for these sex scenes, especially on a show like HBO, HBO's doing, and like they rattle off all the all the other HBO. It's now a requirement on HBO programming, awesome. HBO productions. Well, look at their shows: Westworld, tons of sex yeah. and nudity. Yeah. Game of Thrones, tons of sex yeah. and nudity. Yeah, they they listed a bunch of shows in the that are have not premiered yet yes. that are currently in production for their first seasons. Uh, and there's one on every single set right. and that's a new rule. And I think that that makes perfect sense. I hope that it's a beginning a wave in the industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, I, I, I would recommend anyone reading to go out and read this Rolling Stone article because it definitely opened my eyes as someone that's been like you've 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 performed on sets that have mm-hmm. had these uh, had intimate situations. Yeah. I've I've directed sets that have had uh, intimate situations. It yes. can be as simple as just a kiss. Right. You just when you, uh, in my experience, walking up to the actors and you're just like do do whatever's I'd, comfortable. Sure. Like You don't really uh, as Let's a director, talk this through you don't really we... know how to approach it. Yep. So it so having someone on set that understands it and can talk to the actors in a way that they understand and they they ever everyone feels ca- uh, comfortable it it's a it's a no brainer it's sad that it has taken this long to get there uh and i think that especially in today's landscape of pushing the uh, envelope pushing television mm-hmm. i mean it it seems like it. I, there, I can think of a lot of shows that could use this. <laughs> yeah, use this on set. I think it would make for a safer set, which would make for a better end product for for. I'm you, and when it comes viewers. to sex, it's very important. Yeah, very important. Yeah, nudity, all that kind of stuff. Uh, all right, let's move on to something a little more lighthearted and awesome. Uh, Steve Carell is coming back to TV. Woo! 
Yes. Yes, that. Are they rebooting The Office? No. Thank goodness. That's, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm okay with that, too. But it's sort of office-y. Yes, it is. It's an, it is a workplace comedy. Yes. But I – and I love this idea because I wrote a script a while ago about a – like behind the scenes of a reality show. It was like a reality travel show, like a Bear Grylls kind yeah, of situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I always loved the behind the scenes of a TV show kind of thing. Likewise. Do you remember the – do you remember um, that Michael Showalter show when it was just oh. – took place in between the breaks of a talk show? <laughs> yes. The Michael Showalter show, Walter? Yes, yes correct. Yes. And, and Michael and Michael have issues, which, Mike, was, which was a similar concept. Similar kind of yes. thing. Uh, I love this idea. So it's a morning show comedy yep. with the Reese Witherspoon – Jennifer Aniston and Steve Carell. I mean, and it's it's on Apple TV, it's gonna whatever, be the whatever Apple the streaming heck, service whatever the heck the out. Apple Show yes. network is called. Yep, uh, um, that that is the best cast. Oh my god! You can think like I can't think of three three people that are could work better together. First of all, I'm thrilled that Jennifer Aniston's going back to. Uh, to, to television. Me too. I think that she, that's where she excels. I think she's had a lot I of thought, you know, weird she, movie roles. Yes, weird. I mean, she did the one that everybody thought she should have been nominated for an Oscar for in like, hold on, I'm uh, looking it up. Do I you don't know what I'm talking that. about? No. It was like two years ago. It was like then, Cake, I think. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Cake. Yeah. I think it was called Cake. Okay. And uh, Reese Witherspoon, I've always loved. And she's obviously, she's become a big force, not just not just in front of the camera, but also behind the camera as a producer. Yes. Uh, and, you know, yeah, Steve Carell's taken some time off. He's done some great film performances, mm -hmm. comedic and uh, and dramatic. Mm -hmm. uh, I Cake, haven't, yes. I haven't seen it yet, but I've, I've heard Beautiful Boy is incredible. Uh, and I yeah. look forward to watching it. This, this the Shallow Mayhem continues. That yes, gotta love, gotta love the Chalamet, Timothy. Timothy Shallow was a clue on Jeopardy Wednesday night. Of course he was. Yeah, he's, he's so the was Michael B. Jordan. Oh. Yeah, there was uh, the category was dream roles, and it was about like I actors. I didn't watch that night. Yeah, Wednesday night was a solid episode. Uh, but uh, yeah, this show sounds incredible. Yeah. I I'm really excited about it now. I was excited about it before. Yeah. I, like the concept of Reese Witherspoon and Jennifer Aniston working together uh, excited me. Steve Carell in the mix sounds even and just basically perfect. the plot behind the show too is that he is an aging like news anchor trying to keep up with the times okay and uh you know like the millennial generation all this kind of a stuff and in like a changing landscape which is local news kind sure. of its finest uh and I, I dude this is this is a dream cast of a situation and uh i i can't wait for this i, I hope it works i me too me too uh speaking of a a show that was transferred to england to the states like the office yeah um there's a uk series it's on Netflix and I've watched this series. It's one of those things when you're scrolling by and it just says, people just do nothing. And I was like, well, <laughs> sounds awesome. I'm going to watch it. Right. What is it? Uh, OK. So I have been like, what like David, it? like David Griffin. Yes. I love British TV, but he loves the British dramas yes. like Paul Dark and all that. You kind love of stuff. the British comedies. Correct. Yep. Like the in-betweeners. Yes. And, love the in-betweeners. And this show, People Just Do Nothing, is about these idiot DJs that run a pirate radio station out of a crappy apartment in like a, one of those housing project high rises in West London. Kind of like where John Luther always goes to catch the bad guys. OK. <laughs> And they, these guys are DCI absolute Luther. morons. And they just, they're like techno DJs. There's like DJ, I forget what, what their DJ names are, but they're all hysterical. Oh my and God. legitimately, this show is about them doing nothing. And it's, it, I'm telling you that. And they're, is, they make way more money than we do, right? Of course, they're DJs. sure, yeah. Uh, they run this silly pirate radio station. They're all, all five friends are just morons. And I got to tell you, man, I watched the first season of this show and it it just got me at a, like a, in a warm place in my heart for the stupid people because these guys so, are really funny. So is Amazon picking up that show or are so they ordering – are they creating a U.S. version? They're creating a U.S. version. Oh, no. It's coming to Amazon and – That uh, always worries me. It's from an Always Sunny writer. Okay. Yeah. I just feel like – like you, you mentioned the Inbetweeners. Yes. They made a U.S. version of the Inbetweeners yeah. directed by Thor Ragnarok's Taika Waititi. Uh, which is crazy yeah. that that and, would fail because he's and amazing. It, he's incredible. And uh, it, it was a total flop. Well, the, There are so few U.S. versions of U.K. shows that Office work. The Office is the outlier of outliers Correct. that should never – like Yeah. That, that, On paper, never would have worked. Correct. And in the first season, basically almost didn't. Right. Whereas the Inbetweeners is the more often not as far as British comedy goes because yeah. Britain they're allowed to push the envelope way more exactly. as far as how kids actually act. Yeah, yeah, Whereas yeah. Whereas on American TV, the kids don't act they, they just No, they it, need to be more redeemable. As opposed because I mean, the parents have to wa want to watch it. It's getting better. 
Yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's getting better. Sure. As sure. far as showing how kids actually act, because it's not like it's not like Saved by the Bell anymore. I was like, Screech drank a beer. He needs to go to rehab. <laughs> guys, kids. I love beers. that episode. <laughs> it's a I'm a huge Saved by the Bell fan. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, we all are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but so it's from a, and they're developing. I, I'm looking forward to seeing this because even though the in betweeners kind of botched it, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I have a feeling that this may just work. I mean, I like that it's at Amazon. I like that it's an Always Sunny writer. Yeah. I, I think it, I definitely, I think that U.S. audiences can certainly relate to people doing nothing. Yeah. And and I think that that's a universal, a universal uh, yes. uh, uh, thing that people, that people do. So I, yeah, it, it could work. I'm, yep. I'm into it. Okay. I'm into it. Uh, moving on. Um, let's move this Megan yeah, Kelly yeah, yeah. thing we'll, down we'll, a little we'll, 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 because we have Antonio coming in, and I want to talk about the Narcos Mexico, which would lead perfect into the. So let's talk about the Bodyguard first. Of sure. All. Have you watched any of it? Uh, we're talking about the the Kevin Costner film. No. <laughs> and I will always <laughs> love you. Nailed that. I think we got it. That was uh, we were way more on pitch than I was expecting. Really this to be. good. Uh, Do you I, want to hear a pretty good story about that? Uh, sure. Okay. So I think people. Are, I, I can hear people outside laughing yes. uh, at us for doing that. So uh, I'm in the car. You know. Yep. Yeah. That song comes on. I mean, it's a classic. You got to sing along. You got to sing along. I sing along to it every time I hear it. So Amanda, my wife, not not a fan. For those people that are watching Clatter TV Talk for the first time, or we never turned, both that and my wife are the same name, so it could get confusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. both Amandas, and they have similar similar uh, uh, mannerisms. As yes, if you would. Yeah. Uh, and so <laughs> the song comes on, and I noticed that uh, my Amanda is uh, she's singing along. So I was like, well, here we go. Oh, no. So she's going she for started. it. She started. Now, right when the end uh, yeah, I just flipped the volume off. <laughs> right? And she just like, oh! and I was like, babe. And she's, she's like, what did you do? Oh, oh, you let her sing a cappella. Oh, that's. And that's, she botched it. Oh, yep, she botched it, which ooh, was super fun. That's that's a burn. Uh, that's a burn. I my 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 Amanda in the car will both be singing along to something. OK. And then she knows that I I can sometimes hit the note, but I have I'm terrible at harmony. OK. And if you start singing the harmony line, I will try to match it yes. instead of singing like the like the bass line or whatever that mm-hmm. I'm supposed to sing. And so I will try to match it and fail miserably. Yeah. And so she will constantly try to do the har- harmonize with me, uh, knowing full uh, well, uh, uh, knowing full well that I can't play along. <laughs> and then I, my voice, I will try to match and she'll just go, babe, what, <laughs> what was that? I always go like, high. I know I should go low, but I always go high. I mean, that's, that's the Michelle yeah, Obama like, in you. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. No, I, I, I love that. I prefer, for the falsetto okay over the baseline okay because it's fun yeah it's more fun i agree uh but yeah so uh, so about the bodyguard what I were think we talking what, about I think because this is so well regarded over in england and because we have yeah, so much respect just, yeah. for english counterparts i think next week we should or in like the next i'm definitely 10, gonna try to watch 12 it. days let's try and do a review or get somebody on here to do a review it is about a, it it was a british it's the uk's most popular show ever of all time. I think it, it broke all it the broke records. broke all the records. Premiered to more than 10 million viewers in the UK. Holy moly. A 40% share okay. of their audience. Okay. And concluded almost as high. Uh, it's the s- highest, rated, highest rated drama since Downton Abbey. Really? Yeah. Almost as popular as Prince Harry's wedding to Meghan Markle. What? Yeah. And it's the most widely viewed scripted series of 2018 thus far. Get the hell out uh, of town. And so now it's available on Netflix. It's only six episodes. So that's an easy binge. Easy binge that. Um, Six episodes of The Bodyguard. I think yeah. we can get it in. I we think can we, do it. We can do it. I think we can do it. All right. We mentioned a trailer that dropped at the top of the show that the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Another trailer dropped in between uh, in this week, and it gets me really excited. Yeah. This Narcos Mexico trailer looks amazing. And do you want to know why I like it? Why do you like because it? Because we're going back. Like, we're, we're, we're basically retconning as yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah. term that people keep using on things. Yeah. We're retconning back to like the birth of drugs in Mexico. Uh-huh. Which I love. Yeah. Because I thought we were getting more of um Peña, but we're not. He's not in this. It's Michael Peña is the actual actor, not Peña. Oh, okay. You know I, was like, so, I was like Michael Peña is in the no, show. No, Michael yeah, yeah, Peña, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the guy who was maybe that's why they hired him. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, Peña aka uh the Red Viper, aka uh what's the actor's name that that played him? You know, you know what I'm talking uh, about. He's awesome. 
Um, I'm totally blanking. I still need to. It, 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 in all fairness, I still need to finish Narco. Like, yes. S- the, what what the, season three? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I never. I never or season two. Whatever. Yes. The, the most recent one was season season three. Season three because it was the Kali cartel. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. So, but now season four is going to. I've liked everything about Narcos that I've seen. I just haven't yeah. caught all the way through. Incredible cast. Um, you yeah. have uh, the the dude from Star Wars that everybody loves. Diego uh, Luna. Diego Luna. Uh, you have Michael Pena in there, and it 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 chronicles the start of the cartel in Mexico, and then where they you know. In the trailer, at least, they show where they they start working with Colombia and the cocaine trade. I yeah. guess they're going to probably get into the heroin trade as well. Maybe that that is set up for season two. Maybe. But I love that they're basically starting the series over with yeah, a whole new thing. Exactly. So in an back anthology in the 80s, form, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really that's when interesting. It's, the best. it's really interesting. I, yeah, I wonder how many seasons they plan on doing Mexico wise in the Mexico world. Now mm-hmm. that they, cause, yeah, it's like they they did they did Pablo. Now yep. they're now they're doing the cart the Mexican cartels. Mm-hmm. So we like some Sonora, some Kalindo, that kind of maybe, stuff. Maybe maybe they'll do enough to where they start, like they like the two the two shows kind of dovetail with yes. one another. Yeah, like to the point where the Mexican cartels and the Colombians are kind of in in the same, or the DEA is kind of mm-hmm. the the through line through both. I don't know. I. I, it seems like there's going to be some crossover, yeah. which I like. Did you ever see that show, The Trade? It was a docu series on Showtime. I remember when it came out, but I, I didn't didn't watch it. It's really really good. It 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 talks about and it it's both in Mexico and in America and about the heroin trade and gotcha. what it's doing to Middle American places like Columbus and West Virginia and, and places like that. So um, and I I thought it was great because I'd never really seen. You know how this is affecting Mexico and how it's affecting certain other places because usually when we see it in in a movie, say like um, uh, what's it called, Sicario, yeah. or we see it in in shows like Mayans or wherever, we just see like the height of the height. We don't see like the common person and who's working for a lot of these cartels and these wars that are being fought on certain things. We just see this, so it's seeing like the ground level effect of it all and like you know the small people in it as well as the dons and all that kind of stuff. It was very interesting. Yeah, I, I found it very very interesting. Awesome. I liked it a lot. Lot. Yeah, I look forward to I look forward to uh, catching up. Yeah, but I guess I could technically jump Just, right right into Narcos Mexico. You could because it's its own kind of show, and that's a beautiful thing that Netflix did. Is if yeah. we're talking about IP, is that they right. they don't force you it's to have to watch it. They've basically given you two shows now, correct? Because you have three seasons of Narcos, and mm-hmm. now you can start Narcos. I wonder if it'll be in its own thumbnail. I wonder if it'll be like Narcos and Narcos Mexico mm. as like two separate thumbnails. Do you hear all about the thumbnail controversy that's Mm-mm. going on right now? Mm-mm. Well, because Netflix, Netflix, I've actually uh, talked to someone who who does this, but uh, they have a whole, you know, the the algorithm stuff. Mm -hmm. They have multiple thumbnails, like dozens of thumbnails for all their all their properties. Sure. And depending on what your viewing habits are, they will feed you a different thumbnail that'll have an actor that you recognize or no or uh, a, a compelling image. Like if you like action movies and there's a car chase in the film, they'll show you the car chase. Or if there's like a supporting character that you've watched in another show, then they'll show you that supporting character and be like, oh, that person's in this thing too. I might watch this. Smart, and, I mean, algorithm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's brilliant, really. And that's why like things will... Uh, Things will repeat, and they will uh, like you'll you'll log on, and you'll see a different picture in all these. Uh, and so they're they're now getting some pushback from people that are saying that the algorithm is like well, you know targeting targeting, us. targeting oh. people a little too much with okay. demographics, and they'll show like like a movie that is, has like very white leads, but maybe African American Netflix users are only seeing the black supporting characters, gotcha, and not. And so they, it's, they feel like they might be kind of targeting them a little too much. So the the viewing habits might be a little too hyper focused. Right. But all that being said, the concept of it is interesting. So I'm curious if now if if Narcos will be its own thumbnail, thumbnail like its own property, yeah. or if it, they'll load it up as a different title. And like if you watch Narcos, watch Narcos Mexico. Ah. Or if you watched The Trade, watch Narcos Mexico. Yeah, there you go. Uh, okay. But speaking of the drug trade, yes. uh, there's a great... <laughs> Show right now on television, I love Minds it. MC, yes. which is all about the trade yeah. and how it relates to the American motorcycle clubs yes. who are kind of doing some of the the dirty work. Yes, and we have the one of those York. guys in the show uh, who's with us today. Yeah, and we're going to talk to him right, right now. now. All right. All right, TV Talk fans, we're here with Antonio Jaramillo from Mayans MC. There it is. He plays Riz. Uh, a huge episode uh, this past. 
Tuesday. Uh, we saw you in a cage. I uh, was in a cage. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, you were throwing some punches, getting a little bloody in there. Yeah, I got some punches too. I, I you know, I was able to get a couple in, but I also took a couple. <laughs> you did. You did. It, it felt like an even fight. To a certain no, degree. I, I, no, I think I won. Okay. I think All I right. won. All right. Because you didn't see the behind the scenes. Uh, I won. I definitely okay. won. Was that was this your first time in, uh, fighting in the cage? Or? In a cage, yeah, but I've been in many fights uh, behind yeah. the scenes. Okay. Yeah, Only yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, because I'm, I'm like a problematic actor, and I'm always <laughs> arguing with people, so I get into a lot of fights. Just like Christian Bell. Oh, uh, okay. That makes uh, sense. Yeah, yeah, I, I could totally see that, because as yeah. soon as I met you when you came in, I was like, this guy's going to be a lot. You Hopefully know? it won't happen today. Yeah, yeah. okay, Because cool. there's two of you. And, well, you know, Vladimir Klitschko tried to punch me. take a couple punches. Yeah, I can't take a punch. I can, I can, I can't take a punch. I'm a scrappy Italian kid from Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, I'll take, I'll take out. You can, you can do the fighting. So, talk to us about, I guess, the casting process in Mayans. Were you a Sons of Anarchy fan going into this or anything like that? I, I have kids, so I see very little TV, and okay. what I see is what they want to see. So they okay. were not watching Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> Tons of Paw Patrol. Uh, yeah, yeah, and Disney, whatever, and yeah. sing alongs, and it's like, whoa, you know. Okay. So I, I did see a couple episodes of Sons of Anarchy, but I didn't see the whole season. It was a, a, a seven year yeah, run, yeah. very it was, long. It was yeah. long. So I didn't know of the show. And when I went in for the audition, it was more of a clean slate. I always like to come in with a clean slate. Okay. You know, I don't want. To be informed too much about what has been done. Sure. It's a new thing. It has to be its own thing. I mean, if I have to do some research, of course, I'm going to look into it in motorcycle clubs and all that stuff. Sure. But uh, for me, it has to start with a clean slate. You know? Sure. Got had it. you had, w- had you ridden a motorcycle before? Had, or were you experienced in on motorcycles? Yes, I had ridden before for many years, but I gave it up 12 years ago when I had my little boy. Uh, so I said, no more motorcycles because, you know, the mom's going to, you know, it's not an option. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sure. It's this or that. Yeah. <laughs> my mom, I told my mom was going to buy a motorcycle. She said, I break it. I said, well, buy another one. She said, I'll break that. I'll keep yeah. breaking them until and, you stop buying them. And then they'll them. break you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. No, no, no. So, it's not a good you right, know, right, 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 right. No. decision. But now so you I, get to now you get to do one. But now I get to work. do it for work. And That's now great. I just wrote in right now, and a really nice. And I have to give props to to Harley Davidson if yeah. they're watching, because I have this new. It's a new model called the FDXR, and, and when we're done, you can go see it. Okay. It's so badass. It's like so unlike a, a Harley Davidson. They, they're breaking new ground. They want to, I guess, appeal to the Ducati riders because oh. it leans forward a little more, Ooh. and it's really fast. Oh, and it's man. really cool. <laughs> it's so cool. It, it's amazing. Did you, now, did did you have any? It, did you get to have some input into what your bike is like on the show? We have did. You? We did in the beginning. I had a lot of a lot of input into uh, uh, what we wanted in the bikes, but then my bike turned out to be like the best one, <laughs> and then ended up going to the president. Uh, uh, yeah, because no. the first day I'm like, oh, there's my bike, and then I'm like, wait, it has someone else's name on it. <laughs> what? The? So you know, but then I got a really cool but one. You got, you got I, I got a Road King. It's olive color. It's like it's really cool. Yeah. It's got the Mexican uh, flag a symbol on the side on the tank. Uh-huh. Oh, nice. And, it, and it's got the apes. Yeah. It, it's so cool. That's awesome. Okay, so we were huge Sons of Anarchy fans, and uh, I mean, I was hooked from the pilot. And I, I we talk about this show all the time. Usually, I give shows three episodes, but if the pilot hooks me, I'm done. Like I'm in. Right. I'll, I'll watch okay. it until it's over. And the pilot had me right away. Uh, so for you. As far as maybe when you read the pilot script or you you fir- you got involved into this world because you know the Sons of Anarchy fans are huge oh, oh yeah. and the yeah. Mayans being their biggest rivals and then biggest allies through through the end mm-hmm. of the seasons mm-hmm. of Sons of Anarchy you know uh, what has th- what has that entrance into this world been like for you? It, it was a little sketchy because like you said, Sons of Anarchy are, are hardcore fans. Yeah. They love the show for what it was, and here we are making a show about the rival gang right. you know it's like what yeah Are you yeah. kidding me so no there's there was a lot of uh shaky ground but so far i think they're enjoying it i think i mean yeah. i i don't pay attention too much about what they're saying but i think we have a lot of uh, the sons of anarchy people and we have new My- mayans fans and look kurt sutter is a great writer it's yeah. still his writing yeah. so it's just another motorcycle club but it's still the same same type of individual it disenfranchise uh, human beings who are trying to find their own place at the table. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what Sousa Monarchy was. Sure. This is just a different skin color, but we're the same type. Yeah. It, it shows us and it tells us how, how equal we are, you know, mm-hmm. in, in, uh, as human beings. You know, if our circumstances are equal, it doesn't matter what skin color you have. Mm-hmm. You come from the same world just, to, just on the other side of the 
the what a mountain. Right, right. Yeah. But it's the same circumstances. Yeah. So it's it's cool. I mean, it's just, it, it, the fans are enjoying it. I agree. Yeah. Do, where are you Where are you guys shooting it? Are you shooting it way down south towards the border, or are you shooting it kind of out in the desert? Is kind of there's a well, the motorcycle stuff has to be in the desert, yeah. Lancaster, Palmdale, because it's open and looks really cool. Right. We have the studios here in Santa Clarita, and then we do okay. go south of the border. We do go by Tecate, which is by the border. Oh wow! Right. We do go right there and do some stuff, and, and so they choose a lot of different locations, oh, wow. and a lot of it is in Manhattan, Chelsea area. Oh wow! Yeah, oh, I yeah, know it's yeah, yeah. weird and it's hard, but it's it's Central Park. It's, that's really what it is. <laughs> I'm kidding. I was like, what? I'm kidding. Like, it's, it's a like, joke. You got me. It's you a damn like, joke. Like, <laughs> listen, it's <laughs> you, I am gullible. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a yeah. second, did I miss yeah. it? Yeah. The it's Upper already? West Side. Yeah. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. It's, uh, Washington I would, Heights. I would love to the see the entire the entire MC just roll through. We wouldn't move. We'd be going five miles an hour. Be like, let's just take the train. Yeah. Yeah. So so. You had a very pivotal episode uh, that aired this past week, where the the club kind of had to vote. They they kind of they kind of slapped you on the wrist a little bit with uh, with, with with your tunnel, and, and then punched you in the face, and then and then yeah, and then <laughs> then punched you in the face a little bit. But uh, so where where's that leave Riz as we head into the rest of the season? Well, Angel has done me wrong, you know. Yeah. So he threw me under the bus, and you don't do that in a club. So I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Um, yes, the tunnel was kind of a thing that I had, but it was a thing that Riz was doing to help these, uh, these women, the, the, these women in these situations that they right. need to cross the border. My family's been doing it for years. You know, my Aunt Vicky and me, we've been doing this for years, not only just to make a little money here and there, but it's to help people. Sure. And I guess as a character, I was afraid to let my, the club in because it's not about money. I don't want him to. I don't want them to to make it about money, like a, a business thing. It's like, no, no, it's about helping them. It's about helping this, these women. Yeah. So that was my concern. Now it's out of the bag. Now they want to make money on it. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And yeah. that's always been, uh, I, I guess, something for me is I always looked at the club more as a family business than I did uh, like a business business. Do you, know, mm -hmm. do you know what I'm saying? So when you got in the thing, I was like, I don't. I, I mean, it's a big deal, I guess, because you hid something from them. But for me, I always kind of looked at it like, okay, well, he's just trying to do something a little bit on his own. Do you, do you when you're sitting around that table and it is a family thing, do you ever think to yourself, I don't know if it would go down like this? I didn't like the way it went down. I mean, yeah. I, I thought that they would uh, there would be more of a discussion and understand the reasons why I'm doing it, yeah. and maybe disagree with me, and maybe tell me, listen, uh, keep us in the loop, okay. or, or or don't do it so often. But to take my patch away, yeah, I was like, I'm about to punch all of you in the face. <laughs> but it's not in the script. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, can I do this? No, it's not in the script. Damn. <laughs> was the was the fight scene in the cage? Uh, was that kind of pulled from where, how they actually do it in some motor clubs? Like this is how they settle the. This is how they do it. Yeah, yeah. this is how they do it. I mean, you know, you have the the table meeting. Yeah. And if uh, you don't agree with a decision, then you go in the cage. And if you don't fix it in the kitchen, then you go in the kitchen and do dishes or something. That's how we do it you know, here on yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 The cage? Yeah, no, we, you guys yeah, go to the kitchen and do dishes. Both. Dishes. Okay. We, <laughs> we, okay, yeah. We go to the cage and do dishes, actually. That's, that's <laughs> where... That's, yeah. that, that, that's, that's a little different. It's a little <laughs> yeah. different. It's terrific. Uh, so, so is, correct me if I'm wrong, is this this your first uh, first series regular? Uh, no, no, no. I've you, had... Uh, you've, you've done... You've, you, you, you were on Shades of Blue for a little while. I was. I was on Shades of Blue. I was on Dallas, yeah. And then I've done a lot of guest stars and so many shows. I mean, yeah. I've been around for like 16 years, yeah. 17 years. It's just... Uh what, what's you know. it? What's what's the what's the tone? What, what's it like different now? Going to set every week, every day, working on the on the I mindset. Can, I can, I guess, yell at people easy, you know, and demand <laughs> things, you know. Now I can say, what? The, where is my, you know, mm -hmm. that yeah. kind of thing? Mm -hmm. yeah. Slam the door of my trailer, yeah. you know. Going full Mariah Carey. You know, I, yeah, I, I can do more yeah. of that. Sure. Uh, you know, ask for certain colors of M and M's. You know, I mean, I mean, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, you know, I was a serious regular before on a comedy show, which wasn't very funny, but I uh, was there for a while. Um, <laughs> wisdom of the crowd. Was it Wisdom of the crowd? I can't say what it was because then I, I'm going to, you know. Uh, yeah. But Fair people, people know if they. If they I'm messing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I, got you. I was actually on different strokes and that it, was very funny. Oh, yeah. Nice. It was in Central Park in Manhattan, right? Uh, was I don't know. <laughs> Come on, it's the callback. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, no, it's great. It's great being part of this ensemble. It really is being part of the Kurt Sutter family. I mean, just the whole Sons of Anarchy family. It, yeah. It's just wonderful. Let me ask you a question because I, 
I'm always intrigued by the the shots in the show. Are a lot of the times when you guys are riding the bikes and like the the long form and stuff, or is that you? Or is that you? Or are they doing yeah, a lot? Okay. No, I mean, I mean, they ask you if if someone does. If some of the guys didn't ride; they were not uh, experienced riders. Sure. So yeah. they had to go to go through the uh, motorcycle Harley Davidson school or whatever. Gotcha. Um, and, and now they ride and they're good, you know. But if if someone doesn't feel safe to do something, if we're going too fast, I mean, we have the stunt double to do it. Okay. But most of, most of us do it. I mean, unless we're going a hundred miles, which we're not going a hundred miles, and whatever doing, you know. Willies and right, right, right. you know the stunt guy will do it because it's not safe for the actor to do it. Right. Uh, but we do it. No, we do it. I and the first pilot, could, you know, we did the pilot twice. Yeah, yeah. And the first pilot, we did some crazy stuff on the motorcycle. I was like, "Wait, what? You want me to do what?" <laughs> I mean, I said I could ride, but what? Did, what do you want me to do? Do what? I mean, there was like two poles, like one here, one here. And it's like, okay, you're gonna go straight, in a straight line, really fast, make a quick ride into that alley. Between those poles, <laughs> I'm like, can I measure it? Because it was literally like, I'm not sure if the bike fits. But they're like, okay, you ready? You ready? Should we go? And I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then it was like, yeah, wow. it was crazy. You just what have was, to do it. What was the, uh, you know, like between the first and the second pilot, What were, where was your thought process in that? Like, was it me? Was it somebody else? Was it, or was it? I mean, what's the what was the biggest difference, I guess, between the pilot? And you the, know, I, I don't know if it was tone or or. I don't know. I mean, the cast was different. They replaced a lot of guys, and the writer, the writer, the writing was the same because it was Kurt. Right. Um, but I think maybe just the tone of it, the rhythm of it. I don't know. You know, uh, the, on the first pilot, I was the vice president. Oh. oh. Yeah. But then they realized yeah, he's too young to be the vice president. Yeah. So on the second time around, they made me the secretary because I have the best legs. <laughs> <laughs> and and Raúl Trujillo from Apocalypto became uh, uh, the. You know, my papa became the vice president, which makes more sense. He looks more experienced and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just look like, okay, vice president, who who did you sleep with? (laughs) (laughs) So, but that was the first time around, and they replaced a couple guys. And, you know, the network, they make their decisions. They watch it, and then they, they think, well, you know, maybe this, maybe that. You know, those decisions are out of my hands. You know, I just do the best I can with what's given to me. You know, I mean, sometimes I wish they'd give me more. But you know, it, it, it's not my show. You know, I have to do. I have to be part of the ensemble and do what's asked. What's asked of me. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I think that, I think Sons went through a very similar process with their with their pilot in the yeah, first the yeah. first episode. So and it worked to the advantage of the show. And I think that uh, we're we're seeing whatever whatever retooling that they did behind the scenes between the two pilots. I think this show seems to have a very clear cut vision as far as where they're heading in 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 it's, season one it's sharper it's just very sharp it's it starts with a bang it doesn't it doesn't go slow you know like it, it's more like it's it, let's go let's yeah. go there's something happening here. right right so it's it, yeah yeah i think you're right and um you know, do you ever do you ever see any uh some like actual motor club guys like the Mo- i see mongols uh Cuts in LA sometimes. You ever tell me like I'm on uh, I'm on my end. No, I I hide when I see that <laughs> because you know they're they're gonna probably say something that I'm not doing right or or right. you know it's like okay listen I just play one on TV yeah <laughs> just like when women get upset at me when I you know manhandle Jennifer Lopez and then when I come to me and get mad I'm like listen it's just television it's, yeah please okay I don't really hit women unless you deserve it. <laughs> And you're getting close. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, 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 just a joke. That's Anyone just a joke. who's listening, That's please just don't a be joke. don't be just, hypersensitive. Just a okay? joke. It's humor. Just a joke. Because nowadays we're very sensitive. Yes, very yes. sensitive. Now, are, you, are you, is Mayan still in production right now in season one, or no, are you we, on a break? No, we wrapped. We wrapped, and we're on a break, and we'll go back and do second uh, season next year. Okay, and then in the in the meantime, are I. I think I read that you're uh, you've got a th- you're, you're in a theater company. In I town? I belong to a one of the best theater companies in this city in California and the whole country. It's called Antias Theater Company. They do classical theater, and if you've never been and if you don't know theater, that's where to where you go because sometimes you don't know theater and they go to a see a small friends production and then like oh <laughs> oh what is this no 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 you got to see a good one so that you can see what it's like and, and this company and ts theater company they're gonna open this weekend little foxes oh. terrific play i just finished a play the one before that we did three days in the country by patrick marlborough which is the guy who wrote closer you know oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so he he did an adaptation of 
30 days in the country because that okay. one is four and a half hours long. And they're like, <laughs> that's too long. Too long. So he adapted it and called it called it three days in the country. We just finished. And it was great. It's a great company. If you enjoy theater and if you don't, you should support it more because it's really good. When theater is good, it's it's alive. It's right hey. there in front of you. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a comedian. So live, oh. everything live is, is where. Better. Yeah. Touring, yeah, all that kind it's of stuff. It's just terrific. So. You know, yeah. it's always different. You know, yeah. Even though it's the same, it's different. Yes. Yes. Yeah. If that makes any sense. No, no. Yeah. It totally does. Uh, f- I mean, thank you for coming in because we love your show we love your character um as much as we didn't appreciate what happened at the table on (laughs) tuesday uh and we'll change it as as two diehard sons of anarchy fans um i I, we can't thank you enough for bringing the life a a show like it back Mm -hmm. to life in listen i was always kind of on board with mayan's when they were on Sons of Anarchy, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I was never like, I was like, guys, let's let's, let's get work to together. Get, let's, let's work, work together. together. Let's work yeah. together. Instead of working, you know, in the the rival gang, we got to be going against the the powers the that be outside. Exactly. The bigger power. Correct. Yes. The DOJ or Ray the, McKinnons and yeah, everything, yeah, right? Yeah, the yeah. bigger guys. Yeah. yeah. Instead of dividing us, which are weaker, let's right. get together. No, right. no, no. This is this is a great show. I mean, there's, there's no show like it. No. The tone, the rhythm, the music, the colors. I mean, Kurt's writing, and, and you know, thanks to him and, and, and Emilio, Emilio uh, Rivera, who was one of the original yeah. Mayans and Sons of Anarchy. If it wasn't because of him, the, I don't know if the show would have yeah. continued. You know, yeah. it took some years. It took three to four years for it to develop. Right. right. They weren't sure if they were going to do it. And then. And we've always talked about, you know, Sons of Anarchy, Mayans, the same thing. When. when a lot of shows make the gangster life look not gangster, but you know, like the the alternative lifestyle, the the, the criminal life, the yeah, criminal smooth. life. Do you know what I'm saying? They make it look way more sexy, like in a Sopranos or something like that. Whereas Sons of Anarchy and Mayans, they've really put that grit to it. They put that when you watch certain Mayans episodes or certain Sons episodes. Yeah. When you're done, you feel a little bleh, inside. It's a hard, yeah, like it's wrong. It's, it's wrong. wrong. Yeah, it's, it, wrong. It is, it's wrong. Yeah. Everybody knows it's wrong, but it must be done. <laughs> exactly. Right. That's the difference. It's like, look, we do what we have to do to survive. Yeah. Don't make it pretty. I mean, sometimes it's really wrong what we do as human beings even right now. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, we disagree with something and we, we're going to send bombs to the people we disagree with. I right. mean, that's what's happening in the political world. And I'm sorry if I'm getting political no, here. No, no, no. But we try to get our agenda forward however way we can. And sometimes our limitations makes us do things like this or that. You know, right. these guys are not the best educated, like, you know. Harbert or Julia or whatever yeah. so they're manly man and they find a way to get things done and it feels wrong sometimes it is wrong <laughs> it's, yeah. like, it's like sorry well, yeah. well said yes. well said my man well said uh, well congratulations on the show because we love thank it thank you so much yeah. thank you for coming in um, pleasure thank you for having me thank you for all the support and love of all the people that are listening thank you to my I think six or seven fans I have around the world. <laughs> Thank you for following me around and supporting me. I really, I need to get three more. So please talk to your cousins. Get those double digits. Yeah, yeah. Get, yeah. I, need, I need to get the number 10. I need to get 10, 10 fans. When yeah. I, Cause when I have 10 followers on Instagram, I, I that's it. I made it. It's huge. Yeah. That's, that's, that's great. Oof. That'd, be a, that'd be a big, that'd be a big step. Antonio Jaramillo. You are the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, again, when maybe once uh, Mayan season two pops off, you come back in and hang out. Sure, I will maybe, be here. Maybe bring some other Mayans with you. Hey, we can have of a, course, right, bring yeah. some of the and guys from the motorcycle ride together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we need to uh, come out and take a picture with you, Harley. Let's do it. All right, yes. Let's do awesome. It. Yeah, yeah. Mayans MC airs Tuesdays, 10 p.m. on FX. There you go. Uh, special thanks to Antonio Jaramillo for coming in the studio. Thad botched it. No. We, 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 that, we, we won't air his That's not going to. That, that, that was bad. That, that was bad. He, uh, he plays Riz on Mayans MC. It's on Tuesday on FX. Uh, we really had a blast talking to him. He's an awesome guy. You guys can check out the Collider, uh, Collider video. Twitter and Instagram. We took a picture with his Harley out, out, out uh, yeah. outside of the studio, that was, which is a, that's awesome. That's a badass Harley. Yeah. You can follow Thad and I. We post pictures like that. Yeah, um, and and Antonio's Instagram has like tons of pictures of him him with his bikes. Yeah. And he's a, he's a big watch collector okay. and wa- watch winder. There's, there's some cool stuff in there. He does have more than ten fans, by the way. I looked at it. <laughs> oh, okay. He does. Is it eleven now? It's 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 eleven. It's eleven now. <laughs> Good yeah. work. So uh, special thanks to him for coming in. Before we go, we have one last story Thad and I wanted to talk about. Yes, this is very. very very big news. It's huge news. I don't know how I missed this news. I was Man. looking for stories, and this was a com- coming out. Uh, so Wheel of Fortune mm-hmm. is doing a big giveaway for their 36th season. They are giving a viewer at home the chance to win a house. Whoa. 
So you you can watch Wheel of Fortune from your home a and house. then win a house of your own. Does it? Do you have to like go where the house is? Uh, I mean, I assume you would move to okay. the house. It's it's not like the the house is not on wheels. <laughs> they don't like pay your mortgage. The house will not follow follow you. No, I th- they're gonna like pay like they'll pay for the whole thing. Holy cow! But it's not just a house. It's a house in. One of those adult living communities. Yeah. Active adult communities. I love it. Like the Oaks in Arkansas. Yeah. Or the Legends. It's Latitude Margaritaville. What? Jimmy Buffett owns retirement home communities. He does? Where, where is this news? Why am I just hearing about this? What? When can I sign up? That is... This is dream situation. First of all, you probably never have to wear shoes. It's always shorts, t-shirts, and flip-flops yeah. everywhere you go in the Jimmy Buffett. It's just a Margaritaville community. It's a Margarita. It's called Latitude Margaritaville. Where I guess is they it? have three of them. Uh, I'm what? assuming Florida. Florida got to be Florida. It's got to be Florida. Yeah. Uh, there's three three Latitude com- Margaritaville communities that embody the no worries lifestyle of fun, food, and music inspired by Jimmy Buffett. God, that uh, guy is a friggin' genius. Yeah, they don't know which one of these is going to be where the uh, Margaritaville It's like lives. living on a cruise ship the rest of your life. Uh, he, which, <laughs> you know, I go, I, I've been on a couple cruises, uh-huh. and there's always a few people on the cruise. They're like, if you're staying with us next week, yeah. please report to Deck 9 mm-hmm. to get your papers for our next cruise. Yeah. There are people that just like, they finish a cruise, Continue and then they just start cruising again. Yeah. It's just like, you're cruising. And then you're cruising some more. I was on a cruise the one time. Uh, Hilton Head, South Carolina okay. is where one of them nice. is. Nice. I like Hilton Daytona Head. Beach, Florida. Yeah, there you and go. And Water Sound, Florida. Okay. So yeah, two Floridas and a Daytona Beach. Makes perfect sense. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, Latitude Margaritaville, your new home in paradise. Uh, dude. When is TV Talk going to give away one of these shows? <laughs> One of these when, houses. When is I TV want, Talk just going to pay for us to live in Jimmy Muffet's Margarita? I want. I want to move there. Yeah. Uh, I want. I want to know. A. Does Pat Sajak live? Does he have a house at La- Latitude Margaritaville? Because I feel like he probably does. I mean, he's got a. I mean, sure. In he's, in the fine print, it's like if you guys want to donate a house, Pat Sajak has to live in Margaritaville. <laughs> and if I were Pat Sajak, I'd be psyched. About I just that. assume that Pat Sajak has enough money where every city that they go to, yeah, he has a house there. Like he buy like, hey Pat, we're gonna do we're gonna do a week in Boston. It's like, yeah. oh, I'm gonna buy a house. Yes. in Boston. And uh, it's like I'm there. Hey, uh, we're gonna yeah we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do a week in Billings, Montana. Oh, I own three houses in Billings. I own Billings. It's like it's like a little community mm-hmm. it's my own little latitude margaritaville i call it say jack say jack i was gonna say jack central oh say jack central say jack central i was gonna say uh, jacksonville jesus h christ i don't know that, i don't know you punny all genius know, all i know is that wheel of fortune is giving away a house in margaritaville <laughs> thank you and wheel it's of the best news that i've heard all <laughs> friggin week i can't i i i don't dvr wheel of fortune i, I don't if it, 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 i either watch it live or i don't watch it mm. but i'm gonna try to rush home next week and see who, who wins the house how you win and who wins because uh, if Mark Ellis ends G- up being the winner, because he already dresses like he, Jimmy Buffett on stage most days when he, he walks in the studio, he outdoes me. People make fun of my like yeah, Hawaiian no. shirts and stuff. He he outdoes me in the lounge wear. One hundred percent, tenfold. Uh, so I remember this is a, I think this might have been Jimmy Fallon's first season as Tonight Show host. Okay, and he was in Florida, and Jimmy Buffett came out. And they did an interview, and then Jimmy Buffett did, you know, one of his songs. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. On, on thing. And Jimmy Buffett comes out in like a pink Margaritaville shirt, blue swim trunks, and flip flops. Yep. Right. And I was like, that looks like Mark, Mark Ellis. Ellis. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm wondering, does Mar- does Jimmy Buffett play a concert <laughs> at Latitude Margaritaville when you move in? Like, like does does the does the Here's coral the does question. the coral reefer band or do they own a moving company? And uh, and does like are they moving the furniture while Buffett's playing like cheeseburger in paradise? Uh, well, here's what I'm thinking. Yeah, is that you know how in a lot of those gated communities or those planned communities, there's those little lanterns along the street light that light the streets, so you know where you're going. Like in Palm Springs or like a yes. gated community like yes. that, right? I'm Latitude, you. Margaritaville. Instead of lights, they're actually speakers that just oh. play Buffett Hell all yeah. day long throughout the entire community, all day, everywhere you go, all day. Do you have to be a parrot head to live there, or if you're not a parrot head, are you like? In for a world of hurt. If you're like, not if a you parent. don't like, if you if you move the if if your if your son gets you a house, like mom and dad, it's time to yeah. time to time to move to the retirement home. We got you a place. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's in uh, it's in Daytona Beach. You're gonna love it. Yeah. And you don't like Margaritaville. You don't like Jimmy Buffett music. Yeah. Is Margaritaville the only restaurant on the property? I would imagine. Yeah. I've eaten at Margaret. I've eaten. At, they opened to Margaritaville at, at uh, Universal. Universal. 
Uh, went there. The not, cheeseburger in Paradise is actually pretty it's good. It's not bad. Huh? And some of the drinks are pretty solid. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they, they make a mean Margaritaville. All right. Here's the hypothetical question, which is a plug for Roxy Stryer and my show here on the Collider TV Talk yes. channel called Hypothetical Questions. It'll be released on Wednesdays here on Collider TV Talk on your iTunes feed on the Collider Podcast channel. Hypothetical question. If you could choose a band or singer to make a planned community that you could retire in, <laughs> where would you go? Oh, uh, are you asking me or is this a rhetorical hypothetical question? A rhetorical hypothetical question? Uh, I mean, I could I could I could live in Margaritaville for like a month. Okay. I, I think could, I could do a year. I I don't know if I could do a year of Buffett. And I love Buffett. I love Buffett. I love Buffett. Yeah. I I've se- I've only seen him live once yeah. in Vegas. Okay. Uh and I need to go back. I saw him live in Pittsburgh. 1999. It was Ooh. awesome. I mean, he awesome. puts on a good show. It's probably the Fantastic. exact same show. Every time. You and I saw mm-hmm. uh, 10 years apart. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it, too. Our buddy Randy goes uh, goes to Buffett I concerts. I Randy doing that. Constant. He, is a, he is a true parrot head. Randy he is sees a great him. name for a parrot head, too. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, he, Ra- Randy, Randy makes his way to Vegas at least <laughs> once a year. Perfect. Um, ooh, they have floor plans on their website. Oh, uh, snap. Yeah. 1,500 square feet. Starting at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Oh my god! Uh, Caribbean collection villas, beach collection, <laughs> single family homes, or the island collection, single family homes, oh, starting man. at three fifty five. Whoa. Um, okay, yeah. so Ooh, your, this is incredible. Your dream artist community. My like, dream artist community. Uh, I could. I could say. I want. I want the lifestyle of of like. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going with this? I don't know. What if. What if uh, I was a big fan in the '90s of the Counting Crows? Oh. What if the Counting Crows had their own community? It'd, it'd be just dark. Be, it'd be really sad. Real sad. Really sad. December all all December be, long. It's a, long. It is a long. De- it is a very long December. Yeah. But that would mean Christmas decorations up for mm-hmm. like an extra period. True. Like if it's a long December at, at go all the way to Valentine's at, Day. If you at the to. Uh, yeah the Counting Counting Crows. The Crow uh, Mansion. The Crow Mansion. Crowville. Crow. Uh, the Crow Community? Crowton on Hudson. That's an actual town in upstate New York. Uh, <laughs> um, well, they call them a murder of crows. Oh, yeah. So Murderer's Row. Murderer's Row with the yeah. Counting Crows. Yeah. There it is. That's what it what, would you Would yours be Journey, I well, assume? clearly. Yeah. I mean, it'd be, you know, the journey on. Uh-huh. And uh, it, it would be a late retirement community. Don't stop be living. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop. Be living, living. Uh, and then when I those chicken fingers, <laughs> uh, then uh, I don't know, I don't know where running, that was we're, going. We're running out of steam on really this. One. This is a long episode. But Sorry. I will, I will say this: that when I sell my house, it, uh, I'll go my separate ways. So, there you go. That's Collider TV talk for your Friday. <laughs> uh, subscribe to the channel. Tell all your friends about it. Subscribe to the iTunes feed. All that kind of fun stuff. I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga. I'm Thad Williams at Thad Williams. Check out all the fun shows here on the Collider TV talk channels. Watch. Watch all your other shows on Collider. Use it like a daily workout. Just subscribe, watch all the time. We put love you guys for watching. Put in those reps. Put in those reps. Watch some TV. As always, put down the book. Pick up the remote.